Sports fishermen consider this the ultimate catch. Sailfish, swordfish, and marlin, known collectively as billfishes, are some of the ocean's fiercest hunters, and also some of the most fiercely hunted. Some stocks are rapidly dwindling. Despite their popularity both as trophies and on menus, we know almost nothing about a crucial part of their life, where they are born. Learning this secret could save billfishes from extinction. Biologist Sue Spinagle is trying to uncover the mystery of the billfish's first year of life. We protect only the habitats that, it, that we find the adults in without considering the juvenile habitats or the larval habitats, we might not meet with much success. But finding the spawning grounds is not easy. Unlike many fish, billfishes are world travelers known to cover distances of thousands of miles. Some migrate from South America all the way to the eastern coast of the United States. But as biologists use better nets to catch samples, the results are improving. So with our nets, we're able to collect these different larval stages of, of sailfish from the early hatch stages right here up through somewhere between 40, 50 days of age. Once the larvae are collected, Sue examines the smallest. Her job is to determine how old they are. Like counting rings on a tree, Sue counts the growth rings of the ear bone. Each band is one day. We can back calculate then how old a larva is at a given time. We can calculate the currents, factor that in, and figure out where that larva was spawned, where it hatched. And the faster the fish grows, the wider the rings. So we can compare then different habitats, which habitats are resulting in larvae that are growing more quickly, which are better habitats for larval growth. So far, biologists have been successful. The billfish's first stage of life, once a complete mystery, is now coming to light. Well, we're finding spawning of blue marlin uh, here in the eastern part of the Bahamas. When scientists reveal the whole story, creatures like this three-week-old swordfish, smaller than an eyelash, could have a fighting chance. It is a small piece of a, of a very large puzzle, and the way I think of it is for us ever to do anything really positive towards managing or conserving organisms, we need to understand them better. We need to understand their ecology. We need to understand how they live to then figure out what habitats need to be protected and how to better ensure the survival of the species. Sometimes, even the fiercest fighter can use a little help. 